really is. Nothing that we've done is all because of his goodness. And we're excited to have uh, Pastor Urban back with us. Amen. 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 Testimony. If I, if, I, if I go into it, you won't have time to preach. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you I have a testimony. God is gracious. God is good. And, and, and I just, I'm excited about the way that He just planted me right in the midst of this congregation. Amen. I tell you. Uh, comfort. You brought me in words over the telephone. Comfort. You brought me words and cards and prayer. I tell you, it, it's just a wonderful right. thing. You, you just can't. You just can't outdo God. No kind of way. I tell you, it's a wonderful thing to hear your telephone ring and you answer it. And a woman, 95 years old, on the other end, saying, "How you feeling, Reverend?" I, I, I'm telling you, it, it's something else, you know. Uh, somebody at that age, you uh, uh, concerned about how I'm feeling, and then uh, the, uh, the, the smaller children, the Lenny children, tell their mother and father, tell Reverend Irvin and Sister that we praying for. I mean, if, if I'm getting it from all of these angles. How can I lose with God on my side? Amen. I'm just so happy to be here. I don't know what to do. I, when I walked through the door, I stumbled. I said, I can't wait to get in. <laughs> but God is good. I've been, I've been trying to get back, but my wife been watching over me so she can tell me, she tell me when, so she said it day is when. So here I am. Praise the Lord. I do thank each and every one of you. Wonderful pastor who don't mind taking time out his time and coming around and sitting down in my living room and talking to me, him and his wife. I tell you, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. I'm so glad God brought me here and left me here. I don't know what to do. Thank you. God bless each and every one of us. Now, if you can bless us, worship. Let's have it time of quietness before him, that we just worship him for what he's already done for us. Let's worship him. Jesus is worthy. 
Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be by my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Sing your choir.
tomorrow. He lives, I can face tomorrow. I tell you, that is good, good news. Well, this time, uh, we're going to have a, a scripture a recitation and selection to us. Um, uh, Gwendolyn Jones, it's her birthday. Uh, she had request, she said, I want to share scripture, scripture is uh, on my birthday. So we're going to ask her to uh, come forth today. And then afterwards, we're going to ask Mother Face around to come forth with our morning announcements.
and also a leadership meeting at 7 p.m. That's all leaders of ministries here at Ebenezer. Please be present. Again, that's Tuesday evening at 7. Wednesday, please remember prayer service and Bible study. Prayer service at 7, Bible study at 7.30. On Thursday at 6.30, the old Girl Scouts will meet. Friday, Friday, Saturday. Um, the men's course will practice at 9, 9.30. Also, uh, Saturday, 10.30, the Cub Scout meeting. 11 o'clock, youth choir rehearsal. 12.30, young Girl Scouts will meet. And then also at 12.30, the youth workers meet. <laughs> and 2 p.m., the Evans <coughs> Baptist Church Theater Ministry will have a meeting at 2 p.m. On next Sunday at 4 o'clock, the single seminar. So if you're single, uh, please come to the seminar at 4. Reminder for all students, parents, and guardians. Please drop the student basic information forms in the box located in the fellowship hall to help plan for the expo scheduled for March the 21st for all students, parents, and guardians in pre-K through 12th grade. Additional forms are available in the fellowship hall. Again, listen out for more information on the expo over the coming of weeks. If you have any questions, you may see uh, Sister Simmons or Sister Peel or any <coughs> scholastic committee member. As always, thank you in advance for your participation and cooperation. <laughs> the Hospice and Palliative Care of Greensboro has a free workshop for grief, uh, titled Grieving Together, Growing Together, and that is Tuesday the 31st at 5.30 to 7.30. Registration is required, uh, so please, if you are interested, please call 544-5437, or just the Hospice of Palliative Care of Greensboro. Again, this uh, workshop, workshop uh, Ebenezer has several members here that have lost loved ones and children uh, that are dealing with death, so please, and if you think that you can, um, if you need this, or if you feel like you need to talk with someone, please uh, talk and see about this workshop. If you have any questions, you can also see me. We like to ask that you uh, continue to pray for those that are sick and shut in, that are listed on our church bulletin, uh, those that are in the hospital, um, and their caregivers. Their caregivers need our prayers also. Uh, also, we ask that you uh, continue to pray for the Goins and Gillis family as we celebrated uh, Sister Gillis' homegoing this past Wednesday. But continue to lift that family up. And again, it is so grateful to God that we see Reverend Irving Amen. and Miss Irving. Thank you. All that he does. Thanks for trusting uh, at this time, we'd like to welcome our visitors. If you're visiting with us, please stand and give us your name and any remarks. Visitors, please stand. Visitors. Visitors. Well, we welcome each one of you that came to worship today. Uh, we thank God for your presence. It's not by chance that you came. He knew you would be here. He has work for each and every one of us. So we thank God for that. Here at Ebenezer, we like to um, celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. If you're having a birthday or anniversary in the next six days, please mm -hmm. stand and let us know so we can help you celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Wednesday the 25th will be my firstborn's birthday. 
I thank God for allowing me to come to the house of the Lord one more time and allow me one more year above ground in the land of the living. I am 53. I'm not supposed to say, today is George Washington's birthday. I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> and my birthday, I want to go to heaven when I die. I am 53. No more. Today I am 54. Thank you. Just awesome to know that a part of Ebenezer 
another part of Indonesia is on the road protecting us and uh, keeping things in line. God is so, so good. Um, please grab those Bibles as we prepare for our gifts of love. I just want to read your scripture. One of my favorite scriptures, actually. Um, the book of Mark, chapter 12. The book of Mark, chapter 12. Going to that police graduation, uh, Sister um, Kendra, she went up there and uh, she had to pin the little thing on and thought she was going to stick it. But they got a bulletproof vest on, so it went down. <laughs> but it, was, it was an amazing thing, amazing thing. Mark chapter 12. Go down to around that 41st verse. Mark chapter 12. 41st verse. Just a wonderful scripture. I'm just going to read these four verses and uh, then we're going to pray. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasure and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two months which made a question. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasure. For they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Father, thank you. Very challenging scripture. But we thank you that you're our God, you're our Father. Thank you for your Son, Jesus. Please give us wisdom in our finances, Lord. Give us wisdom in our giving. We thank you how you've blessed Ebenezer so tremendously. Lord, help us to continue to reach out to the community and abroad. Thank you for more souls being saved and being brought to the knowledge of the truth of you. Give our officers wisdom and understanding as they... Take up these finances today, Lord. Let your kingdom be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
thing that we need to learn how to do more in our daily lives, and that is to pray. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing, simply because the devil has power, but through prayer, through prayer, we can keep him under subjection. Without prayer, he's able to do just about anything that he chooses to do. Of course, God has rulership over him as well. So when we are tested, we need to be strong in the Lord. At this time, I would like to invite Brother Amos Fassett to come and lead us in our moments of meditation. And while he's making his way forward, be in prayer for the President of the United States. Every individual who's on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come today to give praises and honor to your holy name. First of all, we would like to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who went out on Calvary's mountain and died as a ransom for our sins. But on that third day, he got up with all power in his hands, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. As we come today, we're just so thankful for all your many blessings. We thank you for our lying down last night. Right and early, you woke us up on new time. Oh Lord, when you woke us, we still have a portion of our strength. We were able to sit down at a dining table. We were able to eat your bread, drink your water. Someone got up this morning and didn't even say thank you. Oh Lord, we're so thankful. We were able to dress. And we were able to come out to your house once again to serve you. Oh Lord, we just are so thankful and grateful to have a lovely home where we can come and worship you. And while we are here, oh Lord, if we had a thousand words, a thousand tongues, we couldn't give you all the praises that you deserve. And as we are here this morning, oh Lord, we ask you to bless each person here under the sound of my voice. Please bless their homes. Bless their families. Please bless those that wanted to come to name but were unable to come. And oh Lord, just remember, just bless the sick. Go out to the private homes. Go out to the hospitals. Lord, we know one touch from you can heal all manner of disease. Be that touch to someone today. Oh Lord, please bless those that are in mourning. Let them know that we may endure for one night. But your joke can come in the morning. And as your word says, oh Lord, just please send them that carpenter. Yeah. And oh Lord, as we're here today, we ask you to bless our pastor. Just keep giving him strength to, to bring your holy word. Where someone may say, Lord, I yield, I yield. What must I do? Say, well, please bless his home and bless his family. And oh Lord, we're just so grateful for everything that you have done. We're grateful for what you are doing and what you are going to do. And oh Lord, as we too have done all that you have placed us here to do, we ask for a seat in your kingdom. The word says that we have a home. Well, that home is not made by hand. Well, uh, and that home is eternal in the heavens. Uh, there we can see loved ones who have gone on before us. Uh, 
No, Lord, we can walk the streets of gold. No more pain. No more suffering. All right. No more death. There is the sweet love that unto the God only wants. If you do these things, we'll be careful to praise your name forever. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Are you ready for God's word today? Please grab those Bibles with me and open them to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Thank you, Bishop. I don't know, 15th verse of this month, we have been dealing with priorities. Start off the first Sunday, Philippians chapter 4. And on that tenth verse, talking about too blessed to be stressed. And, you know, that second Sunday, we were in Matthew chapter six, and seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And on last Sunday, I was just happy to be back here on that plane trip. Mark chapter twelve. How far are you from the kingdom? And today, Luke chapter twelve. Looking around that 15th verse. 12 and 15. It reads, And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Verse 15, And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. We'll speak from the subject today. What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? Let's pray. Father, we, we need you to speak to us. It's a heavy question. So we look at the meaning of life and our priorities by way of your scriptures. Thank you for your word. It's pulling us on track, Lord, and we may be more like you. Now, Lord, I approach your word very carefully. I'm incapable of teaching and preaching properly within myself. And my hang-ups, my sins, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, Holy Spirit, I ask you to teach us, guide us, and lead us into all truth. Lord, if there's someone that's not saved, I ask you to open up their hearts today. Help them to see you. Help them believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Father, you've raised him from the dead. I thank you. By your grace, they'll be saved. Now, Lord, would you be in our eyes, my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Please make this word so easily understood. Again, that a little child can be transformed to be like you. Thank you for your anointing. Gets past our tough exteriors and speaks to that tender part of us where all permanent change takes place. Help us to understand the meaning of life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What is the meaning of life? It's been interesting for as we enter into Luke's gospel, he is the only writer as you look in the gospels that was not one of the original apostles. He was known as the beloved physicians. Uh, we know him very fondly in Acts for chronicling, pulling out the scriptures and looking at Jesus. And because he was the beloved physician, he looked at a lot of details as he was led of the Holy Spirit. As we're in this uh, final Sunday of the month and we've been dealing with our priorities, I feel it's very fitting as I'm striving to hear the voice of the Lord to ask this question of all of us, what is the meaning? of life. As we look at our world and all the issues that are going on, it troubles me. It seems as a little child growing up to where I am that things are getting worse and worse as we look at the ISIS movement and I've been trying to figure out their mindset. They feel that they have found the meaning of life. And if you don't convert to their ideology, they will kill you. As we look at the gay agenda uh, has been pushing that everybody should be free to choose male, female, who they marry. 
um, they feel that they found the meaning of life. Some of our young people are trying to find the meaning of life and tattoos all over their body with various languages or various terms to fulfill that which they feel that they're about. Piercings in all kinds of angles of the body trying to bring out what they feel is the meaning of life. And then we have regular looking people in a sense that walk around and think that they have it all together but yet we find out that some are committing suicide, some are killing other folks or having family issues. This question <laughs> plagues us all. And even the church of what the meaning of life is. I believe some of you have come here today not just to hear wonderful singing or a wonderful testimony, but you have that question also. I'm here today. I need to know what life is about. I, I need to know why am I doing this thing? Anybody ever thought about that? Why, why do I go through this? Sunday after Sunday, Monday after Monday, Tuesday after Tuesday, throughout the week, trying to figure out, God, who am I? Sometimes it feels like a rat race. You know the little rat you put in the little treadmill thing and he just goes around and around thinking he's going somewhere. I, I was concerned the other day. I still have Flash. Some of you may have thought he passed away, but Flash, my bird, he's still in our house. He's been with us a long time and I'm concerned. I told my wife the other day, I said, at, at this point, we've waited so long. It's been years since he's been out of his cage. If we take him out of the cage, I think he'll die. Why? Because his whole life has been in this cage, this box. And he doesn't know what it is to be free. As we pick up the scriptures today, Jesus has been teaching the Pharisees and dealing with false doctrine, the leaven of the Pharisees. And in the midst of this great teaching, someone feels that they know what life is all about. And they began to this point to try to pull Jesus into an argument. We pick up verse 13. Then one from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. What is the meaning of life? More than enough, I hate to say this, uh, being in the church for such a long time, I've seen inheritance mess folks up. Yeah, I've I've seen big inheritance, I've seen little inheritance, just mess folks up. I found out people will fight over toilet tissue. Yeah, they will. It, it, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It, it seems at this point, uh, one brother has been betrayed. Uh, according to the scripture at the time, the elder brother would, would get a double portion. It seems that one of the brothers, possibly the elder brother, decided, I'm not just going to get the double portion, I'm taking everything. I'm not giving my younger brother anything if we uh, interpret it properly. So the brother comes to Christ, Jesus, he says, I, I need you to tell my brother to, to divide the inheritance with me, to give me what is mine. I, I want you to tell him to be good to me. Now, now Jesus has said before, he's just come up with this heavy teaching, he's teaching, and someone interrupts. You ever been there? You, you've been trying to pour out your heart, and then someone just changes the subject because they're so introverted on themselves, they don't even want to listen to you. Oh, there's some husband and wives that need to shake your head. You, you've been in conversations like that. You were, you were pouring out your heart, and someone else was so caught up in what they were thinking, they discounted everything you said and just went into themselves. This is this guy. Tell my brother to the body of the Harris with me. Verse 14. But Jesus said to him, man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? Now, now this is important. This is important because Jesus so many times has fixed stuff. He's the great healer. He's the physician. We've seen him work and Luke picks this out because it troubles him. He's wondering, Christ, why don't you just give him a, a wisdom word? You know, like Solomon, remember Solomon, there were two, there was a baby that was brought and there were two women and both of them were saying, this is my child. And, and what had happened, one woman had rolled over on her baby. So Solomon's perplexed at this point. He's looking at two mamas. They want the same child. So Solomon, with the wisdom of God, he said, cut the baby in half. Then the real mama said, oh no, don't do it. Give the baby to the other lady. And Solomon said, 
that's the real mama, the one that was willing to sacrifice herself and her love to give her baby up. They are looking and wondering what Christ is going to say, but this particular one seems to be singled out in the scriptures. Jesus actually says, I don't want to be in your mess. Why? Because the question sounds good. It sounds holistic in a sense, but I'm looking at the heart. How many questions have we asked Jesus that sounded good, but our heart was messed up? I believe today as we're looking at this, what is the meaning of life? There have been many prayers that we have prayed and God did not answer us the way we thought because we were all messed up in our hearts. We asked out of selfish intents and ideals and we see this man at this point. Jesus said, I'm not going to get in this. I'm not going to be a judge. But let me tell you what's really going on. That's why we're here today. I need to know what's really going on. I, I, I need to know something bigger than WFMY or CNN. I got to know the real story. Amen. You ever felt like people are, are, are hoodwinking you and, and telling you some stuff that's not there? I, 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 I need to know what really happened. Yeah. What's going on in my heart? Verse 15. And Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. What is the meaning of life? But if we were honest, even in the church, many of us are caught up in our possessions. Life is in the latest stuff. The things that we can have in a cure and we work and work to get the things thinking that we're going to have life but we become more troubled. Jesus drops this. The Pharisees are listening. These two gentlemen are listening. He says that life is not in what you, you want, the abundance of, of the things you possess. Remember, the original question was the inheritance. So Jesus says, now I'm going to bring it. You don't even understand what's going on. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to get at the intent of the heart so you can see yourself. It, isn't it wonderful sometimes to see yourself? And isn't it saddening sometimes to see yourself? When you can see yourself. He goes into verse 16. Then Jesus spoke a parable to them saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. What is the meaning of life? He wants them to understand exactly what's going on in the mindset of the people around, especially this man who has asked for his inheritance. And he starts out with a rich man, a certain rich man. Jesus did this often. And he says, the first thing I want you to know, the ground that he planted the, the fruits in or the seeds in, that it was plentiful. It was fertilized and, and, and things were coming up out of that ground. Verse 17. And that man, he said, and he fought within himself saying, what shall I do? since I have no room to store my crops. Makes sense. The ground is, is plentiful. Uh, we see uh, a substance that's coming out of the ground. It's yielding to this rich man. But there's, there's a problem because in these first scriptures of this parable, we see him giving no praise to God. It, it seems to indicate that his mindset is that I put the right fertilizer. That I chose the right seed. And there are some farmers in the house today that can understand even when you got a good seed, it does not guarantee that it'll grow. Amen. But we see this guy's being blessed. He thought within himself, man, all this stuff is coming. What, what am I going to do since I have no room to store my crops? Now, he is blessed, but yet he is anxious. Some of you today are saying, you know what? I would have more peace in my life if I could get more money. But that's not the case. With more money comes more problems. Yes, yes, you, you can't even keep up with $100. How are you going to keep up with a million? You, you struggle. You, you're not even balancing your checkbook now. And you say, God, just give me $500,000. I'll bless you, Lord. No, you won't. All of these issues occur, and his ground is doing well. Everything is going well. But notice at this point, he's troubled because now that he has a plentiful crop, he asks himself, what am I going to do with it? I, I've got so much. What am I going to do with it now? Verse 18, so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build graves. 
And there I will store all my crops and my goods. What is the meaning of life? We're really, we're digging at this point. He, he has everything. His, his crops are growing well. They're coming up, so he's troubled. He's like, man, the money is coming in. My 401k, the percentage rate is up. I'm telling you, the bail out of Greece, everything is doing good for me. The stock market is up for me, record highs, all is good. But what am I going to do with all the money, Tony? I can't, I can't keep it in true life. Bank of America, they can't handle this money. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my stuff to some offshore accounts. I, 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 need, I need something, an international bank that can handle all these funds. So I'm going to tear down my little bonds. And I'm going to build some bigger bonds. What is the meaning of life? So, so he has much, but it's causing more problems because now he's got to store it. So now he's got to put a whole process in. i got to tear down the little ones. i got to build up more. And he says, and there I'm going to store all my crops. In my goods. The question is, what is the meaning of life? What is really yours? What's your stuff? What, what, what is really your stuff? And, and I, I, I want to be blatantly honest today because I want to get this right. Some of y'all think y'all got stuff. You ain't got it. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Some of you, you think that car is yours, but don't. Just, just, just miss a few pages. <laughs> Y'all don't have to say amen because I'm having fun today. I'm just trying to hear the Lord. I, I'm telling you, you think it is. You shine it up. You wash it. You miss church. You miss other stuff. And you think this is my car. Stop paying for it. <laughs> well, pastor, this is my house. I'm paying the mortgage. I am 25 years into this mortgage payment. Only got five years more. It is my house. We have lived. We raised our kids. Our dogs run into the back, backyard. Stop paying your mortgage. Yeah, go ahead. Tell the bank. Tell the bank. I've been paying for 25 years and you know what? I decided because I went to Ebenezer Baptist Church. This is my house. Pastor Foote told me to try this. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not paying any more fight. It's, it's pretty much mine. Go ahead. Tell the bank that. They will send you a notice eventually. And then you will find out whose house it is. <laughs> Credit card debt. And I want you to think of yourself, all of this stuff we try to get, what do we really own? What is ours? If the tallies were taken up and we added up our assets and our liabilities. And we had to sell everything that we had to just break even, would we be able to? I believe there'll be some that were in the house of the Lord today, you would have some flip-flops on, shorts, your hair would be natural. We say, what happened? You say, this is all I can afford. We, we try to get everything, and this guy, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build, I'm going to build more, greater, then I'm going to store my crops, the, the things that God blessed him with, he said, it's mine. My goodness, the, the things that God gave him the strength to do, he said, it's mine, and some of us have stamping our name on things that's not ours. It's as crazy as the young girl that gets in a relationship and puts Bobby's name on her body in a tattoo. And then in three months, Bobby goes with another girl. There ought to be some amens. And if I'm talking about you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This whole mindset is mine. Look at verse 19. What is the meaning of life? He's got it together. He says, man, I, I got it. Eureka, big barns. I know the meaning of life. He says, I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat. Drink. And be merry. Some of y'all are amen into that. Then <laughs> he worked it out. Now, come on now. Let's look at this. Listen, what does it mean in life? From, from, from a, just a, a, a mindset of the United States. This is good, man. It's plentiful. He's worked some years, and, and now his crop has come in, bigger barns. It's retirement time. 
And he's worked hard for this. And he says, you know what? I got bigger money. And then th th there's a problem, verse 19. He says, I said to my soul. That's an amazing thing because when we look at the meaning of life, we've got to decide who owns what. I mean, if, if it's your soul per se, then, then you should be able to call the shots on it, right? He said, I'm going to say to my soul, soul, you got many goods laid up for many years. What we want to do now is indulge the flesh. Now, this is problematic. Look at he looks at. He said, we're going to eat with the flesh. We're going to drink with the flesh. And we're going to be merry with the flesh. What is the meaning like? There's a problem. And, and some of you have realized this. And if you haven't, you will. You get all. I know I'm talking about just about two people in the house. I know y'all ain't nobody old anymore. Ain't nobody old. You know, we, we all young and I'm, I'm just as young as I feel. Yeah, whatever, whatever. We are all getting old. We can cover it up, Mary Kay it up, excuse me. We can diet. We can exercise the new YMCA. You can run around the track all you want to. Everything lose 50 pounds, whatever you want to do. But please understand, all of us are getting old. What is the meaning of life? The problem is, he's hinging on everything on the moment. That, that he's going to feel the same way that he feels today. And he says that the meaning of life to him is eating and drinking and be merry. But if you lose your appetite. You know, there are some folks that are even here today that are going through chemo. And you don't even know it. But when they eat, it tastes like metal to them. They're not happy with eating and drinking. That, that, that's not pushed them. But oftentimes, looking at High Point Road and Wendover, we love to eat, drink, and be merry. What is the meaning of life? When people come from Haiti and others and Jamaica, one place that I bring them, and, and it's sad, I, I probably need to repent, I take them to Golden Corral. I do. I, I take them there. And they're amazed. If you come from overseas and, and the first place I take you is Golden Corral. I remember, I remember one person coming over here and I took them to Golden Corral and I said, it's all you can eat. <laughs> Evidently, they, they thought it was, I said, it's some you can eat or something of that sort. So after they finished their first round, they said, I can go back. They went back again and again. I said, it's all you can eat. <laughs> They were amazed in America that we could partake of all the food over and over again with one price. Eating and drinking and being merry. But that can't be what life is all about. It can't be. It can't be the fact that we were hungry and we, we ready to go eat. That can't be all that life is about. It, it can't be just looking for the next high, the next party, the next dance, the next this, living for the weekend. If that's all we got, verse 20, I didn't make this up, this, this is the word, but God said to him, Is that in your whatever translation you have? You, you have this next word. I told you, I'm just taking my time today. We, but God said to him, Fool! Yeah, there's some fools in the house. Hey, I'm just kind of looking at everybody. If I had a mirror, I look at myself, there's some fools in the house. But God said to him, Fool! This night! Your soul. Your soul. You know, he said, my soul. Your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? What is the meaning of life? God, isn't he amazing? Can I tell you? This guy has a retirement plan. It's, 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 it's pumping. He's got his life plan out. He's going he's gonna to travel, fly all over the place. Everything's good for him. This whole process, um, he, he's got it taken care of. And then God 
interrupts. That, that's our struggle, even in the, the church today. We want it our way. We want services the way we want it. We want our life the way we want it. But when God interrupts, that's, that's, that's why people have abortions, because uh, when a, a child is not expected and it messes up their life plan, it's like, no, no, God, I, I know you provide a child, but I, it, it, it's the wrong time. Husbands walk away from wives and wives because it just doesn't feel right. I don't love them anymore. I've fallen out of love. But what is the meaning of life? But God said, fool! Old Testament, Nabal. Remember him, Old Testament? Abigail. Sister Abigail. It refers back, I believe Jesus is remembering that, that Old Testament script of, of Nabal who thought he had it all together, but then he was struck with an illness and died. Nabal, this night! I don't want to be morbid, but if tonight's your night, what's going to be important to you? If tonight's your night, your last night on terra firma, on this earth, you got you got just about ten hours left. What's going to be important to you? He said, "Your soul, the one that you said that was yours, is required of you." <laughs> what he's saying is, you thought it was yours, but you were making payments. Mortgage, car. You thought it was yours, but you would just make it was a time plan. It was a time plan. I, I gave it to you, and you were making payments on a daily basis. You were supposed to be putting into the bank, but you've been taken out. That's what you were supposed to, but 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 I was the I was the good soul on. I let it go and, and gave you another year. And gave you another year. The devil kept saying, kill them. Take them out. But God says, no, 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 no. We're going to fertilize around them a little bit more. We're going to give them some, some more time. But eventually, time runs out. Your soul is required of you. And then he makes this profound statement. God says, then all those barns you build. Who are they going to go to? I'm concerned. I'm concerned because I, I, I think I'm, I'm trying to prepare and, and, and try to focus on the Lord. And, and, and I think the, the little stuff I got, my lawnmower, if, if I leave it to the kids and Bianca and everything, it's going to be all right. But I'm concerned about grandkids. And I am. I'm, I'm concerned about, you, you know, what if I'm passed away and generations, the stuff, little stuff that I tried to get, what if a dummy gets it? <laughs> Some of y'all know, some of y'all were rich, laying your parents' work with the sweat of their brow year and year and year, and then a fool in your family gave it all away for a Lincoln that they couldn't even pay taxes on. I'm sorry if you got a Lincoln, it's, it's just a thought today. It's just, then all of that you work for, all hours you put in, all the stuff you put aside, who's going to get the stuff you leave behind? I've, I've had the privilege, and it is a privilege, to see a whole bunch of folks lay right here. Say, Pastor, why, why is it a privilege that you saw them because I wasn't laying there? It was a privilege. It was a privilege. I've seen some good folks lay here, and I've seen some bad folks lay here. But one thing is guaranteed, I've seen some rich, and I've seen some poor, but none of them can take it with me. They, they look real good. They had nice suits on and nice dresses and everything like that. But it all went into that. And when they did that thing right there, it was all in there. And eventually, if it wasn't still real good, they were going to deteriorate. And if you go out to the graveyard of Lakeview today, you'll find the same stuff. Not the Egyptians. The Egyptians thought that they knew the meaning of life. So when someone died, they would put all their accoutrements, all of their wealth inside the pyramid. And they would think about putting the stuff in the pyramid in that death process, they could take the stuff with them. But hundreds of years later, explorers came. After they got 
past the booby traps, they found King Tut. And all his stuff. <laughs> Who's gonna get it? Last verse, verse 21. We're finished. Sum it up, we're finished. So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The final part of that chapter we've actually summed up in the the other Sunday that we went in to Matthew 6.33, just another rendering of his. But we looked at this point. He asked us a major question, particularly to the man and the people that are around. So, is he who lays up treasure for himself, in essence, what are you laying up for yourself? What is our purpose? I'm, I, God believes in hard work. He does, he does. But when hard work sacrifices family, when you got kids raising kids, when you can give a child everything and they become spoiled and so focused on themselves and they don't want to make, is it really working for you? And I've seen parents buy new cars for children and, and they, they drive them a few hours and wreck them. I've seen hard labor going to so many things, but yet they missed out on the true meaning of life. It's not in your stuff, and some of you will realize that. It's not in the clothes. Thank God for clothes. It's not in the food. Thank God for food. But you've got to understand, what am I depositing? In that what the scripture, I think it sums up. So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. If we lay up stuff for ourselves, and are not rich towards God, we miss the meaning of life. Yeah. Our children can have all these accolades. They can be the best sports, so they can be the most intelligent in school. We can send them to the Ivy League colleges. They can get degree after degree, doctor after doctor, but if they don't know how to read the word, memorize and, and they, can, they can be botanists and, and they can be marine scientists and all of this. They can spend hours and hours in class but they don't know the word. What are we doing? Sunday after Sunday we can come to church and we can put our religiosity on. But if somehow the word doesn't follow us home. If we're not praying and we think that somehow we're paying God off on Sunday so that we can have a do what I want to do free ticket through the week, we missed it! So what's the meaning of life? It's this fact. You're going to die. Therefore, since I already know that and, and I'm getting used to the idea, I got to focus on stuff while I'm alive that can go past the grave. Are you hearing me? I, I, I got to make some investments that are, that are not, I, I, I'm talking stuff that's bigger than the dollar bill. I got to make some investments that, that are going to go for it. And I don't know about you, I don't know any bank here in America that can do that. I don't know any offshore banks that can, that can say, you know what, this is guaranteed for an eternity. So, so what I found that, that is all about the one who's doing the teaching. What he was telling the guy in the beginning is not about your inheritance. And actually, the Christian ideal is not to fight about it anyway and say, take it, brother, because I know that my God is a provider of all my needs and he'll work it out. According to his riches and glory. I said, hey, hey, man, is that how I found that out? I, I found out that I don't have to struggle trying to make it here and there. And in, in essence, thinking that I'm becoming more freer by having more money in my pocket when in essence I'm becoming a slave to society. Isn't it amazing? The more money you make, so often your employer owns you. This thing, do they tell you when to come to work, when to leave, what time lunch, how much time lunch? They call you on your phone, text you, and you expect to jump. But what is God calling you to do? And it's got to be about Jesus. It's got to be about the fact that Jesus knew the meaning of life so much so we find him in the garden of Gethsemane crying out in intercession for us so much that sweat and drops of blood permeate from his pores. So no one's prayed like this. 
Finally, he comes to this point. This is it. Keep this. Not my will. That's the meaning. The meaning of life is we want a whole bunch of stuff. But the meaning of life, what is God's will for us? It's going to hurt. It's hurting. It's hurting sometimes. Because there's a lot of stuff that Howard Lee Woods Jr. wants, but there's other things that God wants. And I'm finding out the stuff that I want is not going to last. But if I can get on God's timetable, now can you just walk with me? At that point, you would think that everything was going to turn rosy for Jesus. Not my will, but let thy will be done. But God's will at that point was for him to go to the garden, go through that garden, and, and actually be betrayed by Judas and skin. God's will was that when, when the fight broke out and, 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 and that soldier's ear got cut off, God's will was to pick up the ear and put it back on his end. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is staying in the will of God that even if you have to be beat, Jesus was beaten all night long. Bludgeon, there was a bigger thing that was going on because he understood when Gwendolyn Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. Surely he bore my griefs and carried my pain, yet he did his theme of stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him and with his strife. Jesus purpose, he knew the will of life. I gotta get to the cross. I gotta get to the cross because folks eventually gonna realize their stuff is not gonna get them anywhere. And so on the cross, nails on his hands, nails on his feet. Listen to this. According to the time period, if you were crucified, you had no clothes on. Jesus is hanging on the cross naked. Naked you came. Yeah, yeah, I was there. All five kids, all five kids. None of them came out in clothes. I'm sorry, Tabitha. None of them came out. They were naked when they came out. And no matter how much you dressed up naked, you're going to leave. Jesus hangs naked carrying my griefs, my pain, so, so that I can understand what the meaning of life. He said, it's not in the stuff. He said, I had the best of row. It was rolling from the top with one without any scene. And now they're gambling for it. It's, it's not about that. It's not about that. The, 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 the thief that was on the side, he said, I think I got the meaning of life. They were ridiculing him all over. But one came to himself. He said, hold up. This guy is not like us. We're naked. We're pain. You're different. You got the meaning of life. When you come into your kingdom, I, I've been to some nice resorts all over the world, but, 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 but this thesis is when you come into your kingdom, your, your kingdom, because all those resorts and stuff, they ran by man, but I, I, I need someone that can stand this life. Like, I know you got a kingdom because you're different than us. You, you're saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You, you're not cursing back. When you come into your kingdom, will you remember me? I had made a whole bunch of deposits. I, I, I worked for myself, and I, I didn't lay up treasure the way I was supposed to, but, but I believe there's something called grace. And Jesus said, this day, thou should be with me in prayer. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. But Jesus said, this day, shall be with me in paradise. So Jesus dies. What's the meaning of life? He dies. They thought it was all over. He's dead first day, second day. But the third day. See, it's my prayer today that you got to understand there's a reckoning that's coming. And you don't die, but you gotta know somebody that defeated death. Oh, grave! You, you, you gotta know somebody that's defeated grave, that's taken the sting out of death. You, 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 you gotta know somebody that's already laid up treasure for us, that's already put mansions in heaven for us, that's already taken care of all. We gotta know his name is Jesus. And then he 
overflows with all power and all glory. And that our lives is about getting closer to him no matter what it takes. Getting the word into our children, into our minds, into our lives. And saying, God, you are my everything. And whatever you allow me to thrive in this life. I wanted to glorify you. Maybe some of you, you've been asking for stuff. Well, you need to start giving away stuff. You need to start blessing some folks. I'm telling you because I found out when you get in the will of God, God will bless you over and over. Are there any witnesses? We, you can shout right now. Yeah, I, I found it out that when, when you say, God, not my will, let thy will be done, God will start bringing stuff out. Now, have you seen that? He'll start opening up doors that you thought always would be shut for you. You'll look around and say, God, you have blessed me over and over over again. The more I give, the more you keep blessing. Because it was your crop in the first place. Come on, see you. Father, help us to understand the meaning of life is you. Not just saying your name, there's power in the name of Jesus, but the meaning of life is doing that which you called us to do. Seeking first your kingdom and all your righteousness. Realizing that in whatever state we find ourselves in, to be content. Taking no thought about tomorrow. For today's struggles and evils are plentiful. Lord, I pray forgiveness upon myself, upon Ebenezer, upon the United States, the world as a whole, for our selfishness. Lord, we've seen it over and over, people like Robin Williams having everything and Then ending their lives. It's not in stuff. People that we respected doing lewd things. Because we thought that having money would give peace. Oh God, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for looking past our children and striving to get the almighty dollar, to get more stuff, yet neglecting our families, the love of a man for his wife, a wife for a husband, loving the children and training them up. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, I pray today, again, if there's someone that's here that doesn't know you, that they'll open up, open up their eyes, please, Father. Open today that they'll realize but I realize some have fallen after money and some are despondent and depressed today. But some are thinking about suicide, drug abuse, a girl or a boy or a woman or a man that can give them peace, they think. But Lord, let them know it's all in Jesus. Help them not to walk out here today thinking that it's about them. Lord, some are disheartened because they had sickness after sickness, struggle after struggle, Lord. They're, they're saying, why me? But God let them know, if it had not been for you on their side, there were others that lost their mind. But oh God, you kept them for a purpose. God bless them. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. What is the meaning of life? And you hear today, I'm, I'm telling you, we don't know what the time span. Like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I want to live a long life. But we just don't know. But today's your opportunity. 
really don't wait. Don't wait. We want to love on you. If you don't know Jesus, and I, I'm telling you, if you don't know him, you know, how do I know him? You've been changed. You've been changed. You, you're not perfect, but there's there's a process that's in your heart that you know you have a desire for his word. You, you want to come to other fellowships that you can talk about Jesus and his word. If you don't have that desire, maybe you're not saved. Doesn't matter how many times you've walked up here today. The day we want you to know, we want you to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you're here today and you're feeling God pull on your heart today, don't deny him. Allow that grace to pull you on up to the front. We want to pray for you today. We really do. What is the meaning of life? If you're here today, salvation. Some of you are struggling with some addictions, some other issues. Today could be your day. Don't be ashamed. God wants to touch you today. He wants to give you victory. Some of you have depressive, many issues that are going on. Today is your day. What's the meaning of life? Those issues came out of you becoming not focused in the proper way. Focusing on what the world wanted you to have. And God is saying, my grace is sufficient. First invitation, salvation. If you're here today, I want to meet you at the altar. Salvation. Jesus, it's me, it's me, it's me. Second invitation with that. And I just, I need prayer, Pastor. I've been going through some stuff. I, I sense today, I'm understanding what the meaning of life is, but I need help. I need, I've made some choices and I've been dealing with that. Some of you made choices 10 years ago, 20 years, and you're still dealing with the repercussions of that. I want to meet you at the altar today. Salvation. You just want someone to pray with you. Third invitation. Some of you, you need to be up here today because your family you made bad choices with your family and saying, God, I understand. But I, I've gotten so deep into some stuff, I don't even know how to get out of it. I'm seeing generational curses in God. I want victory. Man, this altar call is for you. Would you come quickly, quickly? Come on up here. Say, God, it's, it's me. It's me. It's me. I've dug some holes. And I don't even know how to get out of the hole. Oh, I know the meaning. I know the meaning today. It's you, Jesus. It's you, Jesus. I need a miracle. I'm tired of building barns. I need to invest in my soul today. Salvation. Rededicate, rededication. Deliverance. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be ashamed. Some of you, you know, you look good, but you struggle. Some of you having a hard time sleeping at night. Come on to the altar. There are others that many are struggling in the house today. Bring it to Jesus. He said, I can deliver you from that. I can set you free. I can set you free. Some of you struggling with relationship issues. You are your boyfriend, girlfriend has got in your mind. You know it's wrong. God can set you free today. The meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? It's Christ. And following him every day. Every day, every day, every day. Every day, every day. As our ministers come around, intercessors, we, we just gonna pray. We're gonna pray. If you feel God pulling you, Come on, come on. You, some of you need to bring generations to the altar today. You, you can't fix your son, but you see your grandchild, and you're like, God, how are they going to turn out? Man, bring them to the altar today. There's been some stuff that you've experienced, and you're like, oh, my Lord, I thought I would never experience this. Well, won't you pray for another family that they don't have to go through that God will give them freedom with their child, but their child won't have to go that depression. This is praying time. It's praying time. Praying time. Praying time. Praying time. What is the meaning of life? Some are still coming around the altar. Lord, I ask you to pull down that spirit of being ashamed. That spirit of self-consciousness. I don't want anybody to know.
Lord, you said the prayers of the righteous avail of much. When two or three of us could get together on one accord, you said you'd be in the midst. Lord, we're coming around the altar right now. We, we're praying, and some of us have grabbed our families. God, we brought our depressor to the altar. Lord, we brought our manic ways to the altar. God, we brought our addictions to the altar. Lord, we bring bad decisions to the altar. Relationship issues, God, we bring it. God, we bring our disease to the altar. We, we bring our stress to the altar, God. We bring it to you right now, Lord. We, we bring our death to the altar. We bring our gluttony ways, God. We, we bring our ways to you, God. Lord, we bring the reality of our mortality to the altar. Some of us have been running for such a long time, but God, we realize time is winding up for all of us, God. Lord, some of us have heart issues. Physically and spiritually. Oh God, touch our souls. Father, help us not to be like that rich man. Help us not to continue to tear down and build up more barns. And then our soul be required of us and we made no deposit in heaven. Now, Lord, by your grace, would you allow your miracle power to flow? Would you give someone a miracle today like you did that thief on the cross? Lord, we, we can't earn it right now. We, we have messed up, God. We, we, we can't come off the cross, Lord. We, we deserve death, but Lord, we're asking for some mercy. ways. Lord, change our name from Nabal. Change our name from fool. Make us sons and daughters of the Most High God. That our elder brother be Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. That we know to live as Christ. To die will be gained. fellowships throughout Greensboro United States Lord forgive us so many times we focused on buildings fine cathedrals tearing down and building up but not focusing on souls lives of the people God forgive us Lord, I pray for a stirring. I pray for a revival. I pray, God, that it will stir in us, Lord. That, that it spark in our lives today, at this altar today, God. Oh, God, stir us up. Renew in us the joy of our salvation. Jesus.
Thank you.